Hello, uh, welcome back to AP Computer Science. This is lesson 11, and today I'll be talking about sorting and searching algorithms. So why searching and sorting? Well, they're very commonly used operations in computer science, right? Um, and most programs will require at least one of these um, operations. So um, one of the reasons why these two topics are commonly discussed together is because sorted data structures are easier to search through. Now think about trying to find a word in a dictionary. That's pretty fast. But now th think about trying to find a particular card in a shuffled deck. It takes a little bit more time. Even though the dictionary is longer, because it's organized, you can usually find it much faster. So here's some common um, algorithms that we'll be discussing today. For sorting, we'll be talking about bubble sort, selection sort, insertion sort, merge sort, and quick sort. And for searching, we'll be discussing linear search and binary search. So first, before we get into the algorithms themselves, I'm going to talk about something called Big O Notation. This was discussed in my discrete math video, and I'll be putting a link to that um, as an annotation and in the description below. That's simply a mathematical way to represent the time an algorithm takes for a given number of elements. For example, uh, Big O N squared is simply a way to represent um, a quadratically uh, running algorithm. So if the list has N elements, it takes about N squared operations um, to sort it or to run the algorithm. So these are not changed by constant factors or smaller terms. So um, note that 3n squared is the same as n squared because it differs only by a constant factor of 3. The constants don't really matter in the long run when we're looking, about when we're looking at um, algorithmic runtimes. And there's another thing that to note is that um, 7 and 3n don't um, affect an n squared operation because uh, they take l significantly less time than n squared. So because this is the leading term, um, this whole uh, big O right here would be the same as this one right here. So that's the notation we're going to be using to discuss the running time of these um, algorithms. So first we'll discuss bubble sort. This is where we repeatedly swap items that are next to each other um, to get them in the right order. So the worst case would be big O of n squared, meaning it'll be quadratically um, running. And the best case, of course, would be big O n if the array is already sorted. And then right here is the code um, in Java for performing bubble sort on an array of integers. Um, I'm going to just walk through it really quickly. Here we have a temporary value that we're uh, declaring as 0. And then we're going to go through each element in the array. And then we're going to um, go ahead of it. And we're going to see if um, the element next to it is greater than the element that we're looking at. And if so, we simply perform a swap. That's what this little code inside of the if statement is. So uh, we just repeatedly swap items next to each other to get things in the right order. OK, so next up is selection sort. And that's where we pass through the array repeatedly. And for each pass, it searches for the smallest unsorted element and puts it in the front. And the best and worst case for this algorithm is n squared. But typically, selection sort tends to run a little bit faster than bubble sort. And here's the code for it in Java. Uh, basically, we just uh, go through the array. And then we locate the smallest element um, between positions 1 and i, using this for loop in here. And uh, we find the index that we're looking for, and then we perform our swap. Right, That's the thing that puts it in the front. So the next um, algorithm I'm talking about is insertion sort, and that goes through each element and puts them in a sorted list. It's very similar to selection sort from before. The worst case running time is big O n squared, and the best case is big O n. This one also tends to be um, a little bit faster than selection sort. And here is the code for it right here. We simply go through each element and we uh, put them in a sorted list. Note that we start at the index 1 uh, because um, index 0 is already, if we just look at the element at index 0, um, that will be a sorted list because it's just one element. And then we start um, putting things in the proper location um, for each one after that. 
So the next sorting algorithm is going to be merge sort, and that recursively splits the array into two pieces and then sorts the two pieces. So uh, here's the code for it. Oh, another thing to note is that the best and worst case running times for this is going to be n log n. That is substantially uh, faster than n squared. Substantially faster. And if you don't believe me, try plugging 1,000 into um, n log n and n squared. If you plug 1,000 in, this one, the n log n will be 3,000. And uh, the n squared will be a million. So um, very, very fast. If you're trying to sort, um, say, a million things, you can just imagine how much time this will save you. So here's the code for it uh, right below. First, we find the middle index, and then we call merge sort on the left half. We call merge sort on the right half. And after those two calls, each of those halves is going to be sorted. So then what we do is we merge them. That's to say we put these two in the right we put the left half and the right half um, together into one big sorted piece, and that should be um, the code. And I forgot to s put one condition in here, and that's to say that uh, if um, left is equal to if left is not equal to the right, then we perform this operation. Right, that's going to be our base case in the recursion. So the next algorithm is going to be quicksort, and that partitions the list uh, and recursively calls quicksort on the two partitions. The best case, just like uh, merge sort, is going to be n log n, but the worst case is going to be n squared. Um, don't let that fool you, though. Quicksort tends to be, on average, faster than merge sort. So this uh, worst case scenario happens very rarely. And that just that's just a um, a fact of how partition is made. So here's the pseudocode, or sorry, the code rather, um, for quicksort. We first uh, figure out our index to partition from, and then we uh, call quicksort on the left part. Um, if the uh, left value is less than or equal to the index minus one. Then we call qu um, quicksort on the right part if the index is um, greater than or equal to, or sorry, if the index is less than uh, the right part. So note that partition chooses um, a pivot and then move smaller item to the left, bigger item to the right. I didn't um, choose to include that code. So next is the linear search. It looks at each item one after the another to see if the um, element is the correct one that we're looking for. The best case, of course, is if it's at the very beginning. The worst case is if it's at the end. So that's why it's going to be uh, big O n for the worst case, big O 1 for the best case. So um, here's the pseudocode for linear search. We simply do a for loop. Then we look at each element. If it matches, then we return the index that we found it at. Otherwise, we return negative 1 to show that it's not found. Okay, the next searching algorithm is going to be binary search. It looks at the uh, left half. Um, if the middle element is bigger than the element that we're searching for, otherwise it'll search, otherwise it'll look at the right half. And now this requires a sorted data structure. Um, so if it is sorted, then we, use it, then we can use this method. And it's actually gonna run in big O log N which as we know, is going to be much smaller than n in the linear case. So here's the code for it. We begin by starting out with the indices for the leftmost index and the rightmost. And then while the uh, leftmost is smaller than or equal to um, the rightmost index, we define a middle position, and then we uh, look at the left half if the key is smaller than um, the middle index, and then we look at the right half if it's the other case. Uh, otherwise, we'll simply, if it's not less than it, and it's not greater than it, it has to be equal, right? So then we just return mid. And if we repeat this process um, over and over again and we can't find it, then 
we simply return negative 1 to say that it's not bound. Alright, thanks for watching.